Well, I don't know about the meaning crisis Left, right, black, white, or other vices But Jesus Christ is right Oh, if we're all saved From my perspective Our propositions Participate procedurally Running in circles Remember in body We're in the age of decay Symbolically speaking The reapers are reaping Them damn egregores are whispering sweetly We're all NPCs in the belly of the beast Red pill, blue pill, bread pill, Mars Hill Or DMT or whatever you feel Got one and number two, it's all the same damn thing. So clean your room, repent on Zoom, ontology for dummies, a bird's eye view. Cause if you really knew, could you really even say? Totally depraved, all totally saved A total disposition from the bed we all made Or is it the elect? Or are we just insane? From John Verbeke to Jonathan Pajot And Jordan Peterson to the Chris Pacu Show Paul Vander Clays and Griswold Grimm and all the dice he shakes. The sestuary ditty is a little bit cringy and quite the U shaped or the hero's journey. All the NPCs in the flood dread and water to watch you save the day with a bunch of chitter chatter. From the ortho bros. To the Catholic Joes, or atheistic Joes, to Protestant folks, the Joe Schmoes, and Jewish Jacobs, and everything in between. So love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul, with all your mind and your fingers and toes, all your neighbors too. As if they were your own So love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul And with all your mind and your fingers and toes All your neighbors too As if they were your own Are you sick and tired sick of being tired asked about the TLC? About the TLC? When you look at this corner, do you not even think that it's a thing? Well, if you're like me, raise your hand. Because I got what you need. You need Telos Tea. That's right. Grab yourself a nice hot cup of Telos Tea. Not Telos Tea. It's not a thing. Whoa! Wow! 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 Oh my gosh! Oh, we're waiting for Neil. We're waiting for Neil. The Friday morning. Well, as uh, that guy. Ugh. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Welcome to this uh, impromptu recording uh, of the fr uh, Friday morning meandering show on this wonderful uh, Monday afternoon. We had, uh, so the way that this happened was. I had scheduled with the dude, um, <clears throat> and 
he's like, oh, I didn't, I didn't schedule. I didn't uh, put set a reminder. And um, so, yeah, I kind of thought that was going to happen because from my understanding, he might actually be a musician. And as you know, musicians are typically flaky. Notorious we are. Yes. Yes, we are. So let's what, let's see if we can do this. I was just playing with this. Let's see if it... Oh, look at that. Do you see that? There I am. Yeah. Virtually, virtually not alone. You're yeah. hanging out. Yeah. You Ooh. just took Neil's spot. How do you like that, Neil Daedalus? <laughs> Speaking of, yeah, I've been playing with this thing. So we got that. But Whoa. I, Fancy. I, I can't move the... Bu That's how I discovered this. Was I was trying to move the bubble around and do some fancy uh, Grim Grizz type stuff, but uh, I don't. I'd probably put you back down. Oh, get that's rid of okay. Anyways, so tell me about your day, man. We had. Uh, I saw. I was watching a little bit of your stream. I wasn't on the live thing, but yeah, tell me about that. It was pretty cool. Yeah, we had the. Uh, what was it? The totality, the eclipse totality over. I mean. Uh, do you remember the show Heroes that was on NBC? I do. That there was an eclipse that was like a initial part of that storyline, and that was actually like part of the uh, branding was like an eclipse. I don't know if that, but um, yeah. yeah, it it looked it looked like that. It looked like it looked like the sun had a a black. It was completely black except for just the line all the way around it, and you could look up at it, even though people said don't. I mean. I think it wasn't so bad when it was totally eclipsed to look at it, but if it was any other time than that, than those four minutes or however long it was, then you needed like the, the yeah. glasses. Yeah. So. Well, I was staring at it uh, or at least trying to, and it wasn't working out because we, we weren't in the totality. <laughs> yeah. So, it but, got dark. It looked like it was, you know, dusk. And it looked like there was a sunset on the horizon, but the sun was, you know, like up in the sky. It was really cool. Yeah, that was. That, I saw that part uh, as far as visually, it captured that. That was pretty mm -hmm. great in your in your uh, video. Yeah, it you couldn't see. I didn't. I mean, I wasn't. I was doing it through Streamyard, so it wasn't like my camera setting was like on a really high setting, so I couldn't mess around with that much. But but that setting was cool. Yeah, there was, um, I, I like that whole idea of like there being a sunset, but it's it wasn't, it was like a sunrise yeah. set thing. Yeah, it was really wild. Um, and even after the, even when a, just the, the, the smallest sliver of the sun came around the corner, once it started moving past, you can kind of still look back and kind of see like it was dark in the sky behind you. It was, it was pretty colors. I'm not good with colors. I'm kind of color deficient, but um, mm -hmm. it was still pretty cool. I'm going to go turn off my air conditioner because it's making a lot of background noise. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you had a gate or something that was opening and closing on your uh, microphone there. For anybody who doesn't know what a gate is, let me tell you. So a gate, I used to have one of these on my guitar. And what it is, is you can set the settings so that, you know, if, if you have a noisy guitar, it, it kind of cuts out like the extra. Yeah, note. there is a gate on it. But so whenever it would come through, you hear. Like, yeah. Actually, I've got, yeah go I, ahead. Uh, it sounded kind of like a snare. Like, a, you know how you have a snare in the background in a, in a row? Yeah. yeah, it did. Staticky. <sighs> So yeah, we had. Uh, so we didn't get the the, the e eclipse thing. I mean, we had it, the the the, the ambiance of the sun outside was interesting. It was it was like a somebody just kind of dimmed it down a little bit. But yeah, I, it was yeah, it was like a, when it wasn't fully eclipsed, but there was like this weird chromatic look. Yeah, to everything. Dude, I don't know, man. I think life is a trip, man. It is. It was beautiful, and my, my wife was thinking, she's like, oh, what's the big deal? What are all these people doing? She's, and then when we experienced it, she's like, well, actually, I think that was pretty amazing. Um, 
you know, if people driving in from this, we would not travel for this. We still probably wouldn't have ever traveled for this, but it was kind of cool to like be here. And we made it a family deal. Um, my dad still got some of his old Neil family Sorry. farm. Hey man. Keep going. Apologies. My dad, yeah. My dad had his old, we still have part of an old family farm left over from my grandfather and great grandfather, uh, about a hundred acres left. And so we, got on top of one of the really pretty hills. That's what you were seeing in the video was, uh, um, I, yeah, I grew up on, uh, about 400 acres, but his two of his siblings got the back 300 and they sold it after my grandmother died. And so we, my dad, it, instead of cashing out, he, he helped, he tried, he's tried to hold on to it and he's been able to. Right. So it's really cool to be able to have some, real land a four wheeler around on and kind of tap into my my uh, hillbilly redneck roots when i when i can yeah that's great and you know i could tell what i really loved about that is you, you could tell that the kids that were there i don't know if there were more than just your children but the kids that were there were just like it was cool to them you know like they kids will remember those things really. yeah my brother is a he's a year and a half older than me we both live here in this town and uh, so both of our families were there. We both have three kids. He's got a couple of foster kids. And then my my parents and um, and then my in-laws came too. My, my wife's parents came up. So it was kind of a fun family event. Nice. Did you guys do any grill out or anything like that? Uh, we did just like uh, for, for the kids, like peanut butter and jelly, Nutella sandwiches. And my my mom got all these snacks like moon pies and star crunch and uh milky way she uh, she's a teacher and so she's done like she did a lot of like creative things that she, she did a little, um she found some probably like craft where you get like what are the little white paper plates and and when she stuck all the those little 3d looking goggles into them and they did a little drawing contest and it, it made it into like a a fun family affair her family is very programmatic um my grandfather worked for uh, the company that would one day become Lifeway, which is the, the publishing arm of the Southern Baptist churches. So it's like they publish a lot of publications. He used to work for them, and, and they were just, uh, they liked doing programs like, we're going to have a family this, and we're going to program it out like... Uh, lots of different activities and competitions they had my my mom had like uh she's in a family of six kids and so we grew up with that same kind of milieu of uh we used to do baxter family olympics when i was a kid uh, where we would um i was like four my brother's five my sister was three and when we do little games like on fourth of july like we had a program for fourth of july <laughs> like, that's awesome dude. <laughs> so that's still there those hey growing up what's that you remember those growing up yeah yeah uh they do they create memories you know they kind of create like uh and then there was also a lot of my dad was playing around with the old uh vhs camera too so like as you're growing up i mean i don't know about kids now they when they grab our phones from us and they just start like looking through pictures like they're like reinforcing those memories and um it's not ready yet. I'm still trying to fix it. So they're like reinforcing um, those memories. And that's how it was for me. I'd pop in the home video. So I have like a lot of memories that are reinforced from, you know, this kind of stuff, but the old school ways. That's great. Dude. Memories under a toldo moonlight eclipse. Okay, got it, and, and got it. <laughs> you were singing on the comments, Neil. Oh, who you can't got? sing in the comments. We got Sharks some. don't have her. Oh, look who look who it is. Da look da who. da. Whoa! It's a party tonight. He's yeah. starting to grow it back, ladies and gentlemen. It's starting to grow. <laughs> well, the the thing is about uh, think. Welcome, welcome, Mister Luke. Say, everybody, say hello, Luke. Say hello. Uh, say hello, Luke. Hi, Luke. <laughs> That's the first confession of the night. Anyways, um, <clears throat> oh, uh, so the thing is, is about this. We were just sharing about Christians um, 
uh, total eclipse of the heart. Yeah, total eclipse family event today, which was awesome. And we're talking about. I was thinking about. Uh, he was saying that as they're growing up, his his family had like all those kinds of events were programmed out and like. And I think that's awesome because I've thought a lot about this. I, I hope. Here's the thing: when they go away, you 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 notice it. So as a kid, we had some of those things, and then at one point they just stopped. Mm-hmm. And you know, you you miss those things, and so there's a clear distinction between when they were happening and when they stopped happening. And so they were they were valuable. Um, but as I grew up, <clears throat> I. You know, when you're a kid, they just happen. You don't really think about how hard it is for something like they, like that to be put together, or how much work can go into. You just you just show up and it's party time. You know. Yep. My dad made a uh, trailer. He filled up his trailer with a bunch of cushions. We actually had a bunch of old pew cushions because we used to. He was a a youth pastor at an old Baptist church here, and, and they did the renovation one year. And there was you know like three hundred pew seats worth of pew cushions, and we took them home because we could use these. <laughs> so this, uh, this trailer was like lined with pew cushions and, uh, he put up a big caravan top and he, we made this like a fun tractor ride over to the farm to go watch the eclipse. So yeah, it was kind of a, it was a, they did, they put a lot of energy to more, more energy than I put into it. I'll tell you that. Your, uh, when you just said we could use them, that reminds me so much of this, a white stripe song called Rag and Bone where it's Jack and Meg White and Jack, I don't know, they're just like, he's just like riffing, talking about like somebody, your old Joe, just bring it to us. You don't want it. We could use it. <laughs> exactly. It's just hilarious. Yeah. There's, you know, that kind of uh, leftover, uh, my, both my parents, my parents' parents were like, you know, uh, greatest generation people. Um, and so there's like that leftover depression era. Oh, you know, we got it. We could keep these things type thing somewhere in there. I still got that man. Grew up poor. I'm always just, I can't ever have a hard time throwing stuff away. I'm just like, we yeah. could use that somewhere. And my wife is just constantly trying to get rid of stuff. Our house is cluttered. She's like, this is terrible. We're like simultaneously minimalist hoarders. Mm-hmm. It's a weird thing. We're not really hoarders, but I don't like to throw stuff away. I You're like my up. wife, Luke. Oop. You're like my wife, and and I'm like the ordered uh, one. Or, or yeah, exactly. I'm the one who's constantly wanting to throw stuff out. This shouldn't come as a surprise to probably any like every small group I've ever been in in my life. It's just like me and all the women relating, and then there's like all the dudes over there that are just like. I'm like if you're like me, if you like, if you're like me, you like the attention too, Luke. If you're honest, no, about- <laughs> no. I don't like attention. Self-centeredness. Uh, put I the don't mask on. Put the mask on so you, so you can block out the, the powers. I like I like affirmation. I don't like, think I like necessarily attention. I'm okay mm. with attention. Like my wife is very much a Pete Holmes. Do you know who Pete Holmes is? Yes. The comedian? Pete Holmes. Yeah. So he has this podcast I used to listen to all the time. You made it weird, Pete Holmes. And he says that his wife is very much, or he's very much a look at me, and his wife's a, a there you are. Mm. And and I'm a, I'm much more a look at me. Because I mean, there's every, Enneagram 4, just like everything is filtered through me. Like the way that I relate to you is through my own experiences and stuff and um and so i'm very much that way but like yeah i don't mind attention my wife is just like don't look at me let's just like run away she's she's good with i mean she's okay with it but she's definitely like don't she asks a lot of questions she's an enneagram nine but like all of a sudden if people start asking her stuff and giving her a lot of attention she's just like no no we're not talking about me we're talking about everyone else I still don't know what it means, but I heard today Brendan Graham Dempsey is also an Enneagram four. So he's yeah. he is. he's like you. He is. When he was saying that as he was describing himself and then he said that, I was like, Of course you are. Yeah, you are. No what, doubt. Why? because uh, he's very uh he's very emotional. He's very can be can be very idealistic. Um 
a four when they're not well goes to a one, which is like a perfectionist or a reformer. And so in unhealth, like if a four is not doing well, they'll act like a hyper perfectionist. Um, they tend to be really emotional and melodramatic. One of the ways that I knew I was a four, I used to listen to all these Enneagram podcasts, but they said they change more emotions in one hour than other people change all day. And I was like, yep, that's me. Mm-hmm. My, my wife is a four. <laughs> yeah. What am I? I don't know. Sad. You have to you have to take the test. And then what I always tell people too is it requires actually a lot of self-awareness and a lot of work to even figure it out because you can be it's not your idea. It's not your idea of who you want to be. Usually most people say you figure out your Enneagram number when you're just like, oh shit. Oh no. That's exactly <laughs> me. I Damn a, it. I have a story about that. So in 2016, I took the Enneagram. I, I, when I was still working at the church, my pastor was like, I want, I want you to get some coaching. I want someone to coach you. And I was like, okay. And so this guy, this worship leader guy in Kentucky, who actually, he's the producer of um, the Rise and Fall of Mars Hill. He's the guy that did that. Mm-hmm. But at the time, he was at a church, at this mega church. And, and, and he was a worship leader. And I was like, okay, well, I'll ask this guy. To, to, he was he had just put out on Twitter that he was going to do some like consulting. So you know, timeline wise, I wasn't in a really healthy place in my life, but you know, I was trying trying to do good, but I was just not in a in a healthy place at all. And so I take the test, and everything shows up unhealthy. Like you're an unhealthy seven, you're an unhealthy, and when you're in unhealth, you're doing this, and and I was just like, oh. <laughs> I'm really like, yeah and that was uh yeah i should have known but it i i tried to take the test honestly and it gave me an honest output so i would have been like this is a bullshit test i felt so <laughs> down because the guy had to come to me and be like well so you're uh you because that's how they label it is healthy and unhealthy on like a spectrum and he's like well you're you're in the uh unhealthy side of this part of seven you know and that's not just a you know he's trying to soften the blow but i was just like this guy thinks i'm like the biggest loser which you know whatever but wait was he a pastor too yeah he was at a church at the time uh the way that you just said that though because okay i got (laughs) interesting to me like the way he dropped into pastor voice well (laughs) (laughs) well i i i am probably guilty of that myself so well i i noticed so it's weird. So if you watch old PBK, uh huh, he might sound a little like that here and there, but then that seems to kind of go away. And it's kind of, it's there while he's preaching a little bit, but it's it's not like the other guys who are like there's like a there's a type of flavor to it. You know what I'm saying? What is no, I totally know, I totally know what you're saying because so like Paul Antleitner, whom I love, he's mm-hmm. in Minneapolis. He's a great guy. He has pastor voice and it has, and I have a hard time. I have a hard time with it. Like it takes me a little while to get over it. Like I've watched him enough now and know him enough. For, okay. But like he talks in his videos, just like a pastor. And I'm like, don't do that. Is that like, is that like Metro Jesus? <laughs> you know, like, you know, like, okay. So like a priest is supposed to kind of embody Christ. Right. Hmm. And so, like, when Pastor Jesus' voice comes out, is it like Metro Jesus doing, like, preaching? I think it's this idea of gentleness, you know, genteel. Uh, you know, you want people you want people to feel safe or something. I don't know if it always works out that way, but... It doesn't. Not it's, it, it's also mimesis, and, like... Uh, and you're learning it. Like people talk about this in stand-up comedy all the time. You have heroes of stand-up comedy. And then all of a sudden, like I hear this on comedy podcasts all the time. And then all of a sudden, like everybody's sounding like. Andrew, Andrew, uh, what's his name? Oh, the current hot guy. Yeah. 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 Andrew Tate. Um, not well. Is that his name? No, 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 no. <laughs> that's the, that's the. No. Andrew that's the Schultz. That'll get it. Schultz. Yeah. Joel. That's the guy that'll get us canceled. That's a better. It's a better Andrew. I mean, yeah. No, so there's like older comedians though, where they say you're as you're learning how to do something, you kind of imitate someone, or like music, guitar, anything. 
And then all of a sudden, until you learn your voice, you're kind of just imitating. But I think pastors get into that. There's pastor voice, you know, yeah, for sure. Playing, playing the game. Pastor voice. What up, Parlato? Did you just come in here with your arms crossed like that, just showing your guns <laughs> to intimidate us? Son of a bitch. Yeah, I just worked out. <laughs> hey, and dude, I, just, I had some synchronicity. Sorry. I go to this little uh, basketball court, outside basketball court, and they have like the the rim is fixed. You know, I've, I've been I was gonna go get a, a new net because the net wasn't set up, but this one's set up. And so they, they were having this little league and apparently it's this organization called y- young life. And I yeah. guess this is like a Christian organization. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, dude, this is my dream job is like after school, like basketball involved. Right? Like I just stumbled into this. I trade, I traded phone numbers. Luke, all these, all these TLCs are going to end up doing all these, all these, all these evangelical. Oh man, this is, this evangelicalism is awesome. Well, it's so funny because as I introduced the guy, I, Oh, Christian, you told me to record this stuff, so I brought my laptop to record my little <laughs> sesh, and I told him, I was like, this is what I'm doing, I, and I I mentioned our, our community, and he was like, that's pretty interesting, <laughs> and uh, anyways, the, the thought I had just coming in, Luke, was uh, you were talking about finding your voice, um, it reminds me of the, uh, you know, the, the, the eros, the, the consuming your parent. you know, you, you are your parents even at a, at, a, at, a, at a young age in that developmental stage, and so it's, it's where Freud went wrong, right, you're consuming you consume this model and, and he took it as, you know, this very erotic, you know, strict, rigid model. But, um, oh. but yeah, you're supposed to kind of, I think you're supposed to consume and then have like a pivot, you know, to where, to where, you know, you, your, your focal point becomes, uh, uh, I think it's the eros into agape is the wisdom. But. Well, this is getting really close to that uh, Luke Thompson stream from earlier today, I think is with Chad. My, uh, sorry, I'm at my, daughter's dance class and i'm sitting here and i lose myself because i just fall into this mode and it's a pretty like christiany dance thing and i'm just sitting here just like swearing <laughs> loudly in the hallway and my daughter's just like papa they can hear you oh shit yeah exactly can they um, hear christian dance none of that uh devil's dance going on that's right no there's i mean they're basically just teaching them grinding just how to grind and like drop it low yeah, hello. <laughs> um, well, do you, okay, so I, I like this this thing about that you're bringing up, Matt. Matthew, welcome. Everybody say hi, Matthew. Hi, Matthew. I'm a big Parlato fan after three, four, five days ago, something like that. Huge Parlato fan. Yeah, me and Neil were fighting over that in the comments the other day. <laughs> so, no, I like this. Uh, there are times, I don't know if you guys can relate to this, but there are times in life where I'm like, I don't know bitch that's totally like mom or totally dad and and it's never like oh i did a good thing and that's totally what my mom would do or you know what or you know it's i never feel like uh i never see the best part of my parents come out of me and maybe that's like i don't know not to say that it doesn't exist because they certainly have are good people but i only ever notice when it's the worst parts of me and what is that? Is that some sort of like internal scapegoaty thing or something like this? I think that's just natural. It's like I was, uh, I think people, you know, I do this in YouTube comments or anything, or I listen to um, this comedian today, Rick Glassman, had on Dak Shepard. I used to listen to Dak Shepard's podcast all the time because he gets really psychological. Because you're a four. Cool. Is that why? <laughs> My wife, that's like the only podcast she listens to. Yeah, I am, and I haven't listened to it to a long time, but I like it because he's too. I don't know. His he's like too dogmatic. He's too much of a materialist and a modernist. It drives me nuts. But I, um, why would really like any, Rollins or wait, whatever his Rollins face is? What's that Rollins dude? I don't that, know who that, do. Hello, Ro- oh Rich Roll, Rich Rich Roll. No Rollins, Peter it's Rollins, Peter, Peter Rollins. Why are you talking about Peter Rollins? Yeah, I bet you Baxter's uh, wife would like that. I bet not. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, maybe she would. I'm not to judge. I don't even wife. know who he is. I don't know who he is. Oh well, Can he's give us the cliff so... notes. Yeah, give us the cliff notes on Rollins. Oh geez. Um, are, are we are we dropping uh, the what is it with our ne- negative negative noticing of our parental traits? Did we drop that thread? Oh, sorry. I'm. This is a uh, schizophrenic. Uh, <laughs> no, that's all right. Listen, 
you're the boss. You run Look, this the way where did, you want Where to. did you get your art from, Chad? Where did you get your art strain? It's either your mother or your father. I got them from both, actually. Well, there you go. Uh, yeah. And what I was going to say, though, quick, just to wrap up my thing, is that, you know, like Dak Shepard thing, is he was saying, like, how did he frame it? But you guys will know this phenomenon. There's, like, tons of positive things that you can see, but you'll just focus on the one negative thing. And so, like, I mean, we all, I don't know, like, I have no doubt, and you can go this way too, Chad, because you're like me in this way, is you can, it's very easy. I tend to, I can be positive in some modes, but in a way, I get this really critical, judgy thing where it's just like, let's focus on the shit we need to fix. Like, we don't need to focus on the, everything that's right. Like, that's that's good. Like, it's running running like it's supposed to be. Let's let's fix oh, stuff that's bad, you know? And we have... We have a humans. I think this is old school JP guys. Uh, we have a we have a negative disposition on on that. Um, you know, it can get so bad to where you die. Um, the good is like it's 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 always it's always you know uh, uh, fleeting. You know, it's always leaving us. So th there is there is that bent on you know like you said wanting to wanting to to notice uh, to notice what 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 th what is that the threat out there? Like the neuroticism is is a, is a is a uh, an, uh, a a vector for a reason. Um, one thing I wanted to say, just because this is brought brought up to me just the other day, it kind of slammed me. It was, had a vulnerable moment, but uh, and I mentioned it in a little group chat, but I, I took it away. But but I, I like caught myself for like the first time in my life, I think, like explicitly giving myself a compliment. Like I in my in my in my own internal monologue, like I told, I gave myself like in it, and I, it stopped me in my car. I was like, what the? And then and then I was like, well, why am I having that reaction? And so that spun me out. And so then I texted and then I was like, you know, this is too vulnerable. And I, I deleted the text. But this is what I want to say, Chad, because I'm going to give you a compliment. Where where do you identify the empathy you showed in that conversation uh, in our blue collar stream? Because that struck me. You were, you know, Neil nailed it as just being one of the guys. I think our our trade and, and live and, you know, lived experiences kind of, you know, being one of the guys is probably just inherent with us. But empathy to that level of being one of the guys, that was, anyways, I, I, I would, if you had any thoughts on that. With, with the Canadian welders, you mean? Yes, yes, sir. Um, well, so I don't, if I'm 100% honest, I don't generally feel like one of the guys. That's a big part of, wow. like, I don't, like, at the job site and stuff, I always feel like I'm <laughs> the new guy or, like, uh, somehow i don't fit into the scheme like maybe i'm too too weird as far as like uh, maybe i'm too serious or maybe i'm too i used to be too goofy now back when i was still drinking stuff like i could i could lean into that kind of stuff you know and 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 be able to like not think as much about it <clears throat> um nowadays maybe it's just a matter of age now because it's been over you know over 10 years so could have something to do with it but what i think what i identified with was um now in in aa i am one of the guys and and so like i like that's a place where i really connect with with other men uh especially men like myself and that's because that's often a place where there's a lot of vulnerability when you're with your close people and so um what i saw you doing what I felt like I saw you doing was what I think, uh, what I, what I hope to see more of us not only do like in the online space, but more so I hope they carry that spirit into their daily lives, which is like, you're allowing, you're allowing yourself to see, to, to watch these, these other folks, you're listening to what they're saying and you're being careful and and kind of thoughtful on their behalf because as you know you could destroy these dudes with facts and all this shit, right it'd be so simple it'd be easy to do and it'd be completely useless to do that and so you're aiming at something higher which is no like i want to i really if, if i've been paying attention to this kind of stuff for a while and as you said and i'm not about doing zero sum bullshit like i need to put this to the test and, and, and i'm going to try this and you did it in front of the world to see, and you did it. I what I felt was masterfully. I mean, it was just like 
you were patient, you let them talk, you let them say whatever they needed, but you didn't like there was, but there was also like a, there was like a, a strength about you too. Like you weren't going to allow yourself to be uselessly pushed around either. Yeah. I thought that I thought the masterful step was when they push back and you sort of allowed, allow you, you went with them as they push back and you acknowledged what they said. And then you pivoted. It, it was jujitsu. It was it, instead yes. of like, they say that they went this and you could have been like, you know, the typical response would have been, and you instead went, yeah, come on, let's go. And where, wherever they're going, you, you did the jujitsu move. And that's when it, the first few minutes you were on, I was, I was like, cause you were just, do, 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 do. and I was like, is it uh, now? Maybe it was hitting, maybe it's not. But then the guy was like this and you're like, Oh, okay. Now, now. Hey, you guys, you ever heard of John Verveke? John Verveke. <laughs> <laughs> I consider myself one of his fellows. I've been to his university. I, yeah, I would, I want to say I didn't watch, I didn't see the part where you came in. I, I just clipped through a, a little bit of it, but I think empathy generally, unless you're like my wife or like Luke, maybe where if you have that like sensing for that, I, I didn't, I wasn't born with that. What gave me empathy was actually like having to deal with my own failure. And I think that's where with Chad, like, uh, you know, getting, getting into that, that what AA has formed in you probably is if that wasn't there to begin with in a certain way, like that taught you as you, you know, and, and through your own failures and, and coming to that place, that's what has given me that gift. And then I, I do need, I, Neil, I think it's judo, not, not Denjitsu. I think it's judo. Same, 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 same. same. It gets to the point. Just, I get you the could point. be right. I'm, I'm going to do the jujitsu <laughs> move. Here we go. You could be right. Well, and, <laughs> and I like the, I like the metaphor of dance too, right? It's like this playful dance that, and, and that's what, you know, I get, I mean, I can sit here and tell you, you know, I'm the youngest of five, you know, I've had to empathize and deal with a lot of personality types since, since I came into the world, um, you know, seeing different perspectives, uh, you know, life experiences, uh, you know, could being a, being a people person, 92% extrovert. I know Luke is about the only person that can get me on that. Uh, he's a little bit more extroverted than me, which is very impressive. That is actually just to tie the bow on this. That is the that is the the spark that started the whole thing, in my opinion, was my weirdo little brother competitiveness with Chad in the comments on his documentation video about he's like, are they going to or they're streaming right now? I bet you won't go. And I'm like, oh, I'll go. And <laughs> I listened all day. And, and you know, so I, I kind of got to empathize that way um, all day with him. But, yeah, I'll just. I just say I, I can sit here and point to things that, that maybe had in, I'd inherently to excel at that. But, but the fact is, 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 is that wasn't that's not the case because the rubber it's where the rubber hits the road. I wasn't doing this in my life. Um, and the other day was a perfect example. You know, TLC, the TLC training, J Cube University, uh, wrestling and, and, and the stance and care with these conversations. I mean, I, and that that was my point. I wanted to just you know, now I got Neil here is. Yeah, I, I understood, you know, maybe like you said, even the, the, the kind of uh, aggression isn't the word I want to use, but kind of just, you know, that, that, you know, a forward facing uh, tone in the beginning, but, but the notion of like, yeah, I want to be gentle, like holding back there, there was, that's not in my style. There was going to be no holding back. When I got mm -hmm. to the mic, the, <laughs> the, there was going to be no holding back. There was going to be, I wanted to share with these guys. You know, I, I work with these guys all day long. I wanted to share with them some of the insights and knowledge that I have. If that's got to get a little, as you know, as I can try and leave as much technicality of, you know, technical speak out of that, but I want to get the message. And so I think it's the synthesis. It's, it's my training in, in, in TLC to get that care and stance and empathy allowed me to give the, they gave me the chance to have the dance. And then I got to say, hey, man, this is what I've been learning these past years. You know, if you guys want to listen. Well, big part of it. Yeah, too is yeah. that uh so the day before he talked maybe it was that same conversation but he's he mentioned how i like christians i just don't think that they're whatever they're they're kind of they're kind of pussy basically and that's, Nietzsche's, could, that's, Nietzsche's, why, that's Nietzsche's critique that's why i couldn't go on the show man that's right. why i texted you chad i was like you can go places i can't go <laughs> but the, the thing is is like so that's why I, I liked the stance that you took. You established your stance. You say, so I'm not going to be pushed around, but I'm also going to be respectful. Like you could tell there was something, 
And those guys are going to respond to that in a in kind of like a, a positive way, right? They're going to be like, oh, this dude, clearly I'm not going to be able to tussle with him on like, so I bet you there's a couple of guys in there that could kind of maybe go a little if they really wanted to. But I think, yeah, the stance you you showed was I'm basically I'm going to stand up with my shoulders back, right? It was something like that. And then it was like that plus care, which which is huge. And uh, so, yeah, like, because I, I I can only do that for so so long until, like, in, in, where I have to, I, like, bow out or be a dickhead. Cause, and Don't I don't, put Chad in the corner. Well, it's like I've, I've, I've had that a couple of times where yeah. I've, I've, like, you know, like, snapped back before and then i feel regretful and all that stuff and that's just a matter of immaturity on my half like on my behalf and i, I try to work with that and try to get better at it but to, to answer another question um about this um i i was i was um always connected to uh more like um more emotional storytelling let's say as growing up so like like I remember the first movie I cried at was watching La Bamba, you know, and at the mm -hmm. end of La Bamba, like Richie's brothers, like Richie. And I remember being like, I don't know, six years old and just crying, you know? So I, I always had that for as long as I can remember. Maybe that's a chemical imbalance. I don't know. We can take it the scientific route if you want, but basically that's, that, that sums me up. And, and then, so like I, Growing up, I basically was um, bullied and beat up until mm. until I was about like uh, let's see, about ten years old, and I got sick and tired of my my mom's uh, husband uh, saying you're gonna have to stand up for yourself and quit being a pussy. Basically, I got tired of that, and that's when it, that's when I found a different voice. And so when you let that thing out of the can, and it's like it's hard to get that back in. And and then if you don't, if you aren't shown how to be disciplined with that sort of thing, it's bad. It's it's, it's difficult. <clears throat> and so of course, of course, I would find my way to uh, alcoholism because I mean it, that that works, man. Alcohol works. That alcohol is the is the soother. It's the it's the thing that that brings about that allows me to take a proper stance, right? Which is, I can stand. I mean, I might wobble a little, but I can stand with my shoulders back. And, you know what I mean? Can I makes you feel Chad? loose? Makes you feel loose. Yeah. Can I ask what? What do you think was it that was driving you to go out and look for the other flotillas? Um. Well, I think part of it is the excitement of of seeing the new friends coming out of the work work, like yourself, Christian, Matthew, Neil, the other Neil, you know, the other Neil, uh, Chris McDonald. Um, just and seeing the excitement that, that you guys are having of uh, uh, being able to to engage with something that means something to you and uh, having fun with that sort of thing, and then curious of uh, especially since starting the uh, Not Estuary show, I was like, I wonder if I can bring some of those folks in on a Not Estuary show because that would be interesting. Yeah. And so that's just kind of the, the idea. And then basically I just, I the reason why I stopped on that channel is because there was a dude in a wrestling mask. And I was like, dude, of course I'm going to stop there, man. I, well, I, they, they seem cool because they're not just, I mean, you know, you you. There's a point where you tried to go down the road where you did in TLC for a while of just like the road of self pity and bitterness and resentment and just like vi you know victimhood. Like at some point, you gotta just let that go and live your life. Which you brought that up to them at one point, mm -hmm. and they were and you dropped it because they were really not having it. But like they're smart, they're smart guys, and it seems like that they're really. Um, there's a lot of potential there because some of those flotillas, it's just like, what the hell is this? This is just like ridiculous. You guys are not talking about anything. Like it's really just virtually not alone. Like where people will say like people just get online and like sleep to it so they don't feel mm -hmm. so alone. Like that kind of, 
shit is so mind boggling to me. I'm actually going to, this is a little bit of an aside, but it just reminded me of it because I watched it before I came. Somebody made a comment on my stream today and, um, they sent this video that's just like, it's all, it's an animated kind of cartoon thing that apparently Aubrey Marcus was involved with. Do you guys know who Aubrey Marcus is? Yeah. Um, and uh, he like directed it. No, he didn't direct it. He was like a producer and uh, executive producer or something. And um, the director of it was this different cat, but it's a, uh, I don't know, I'll send it to you guys separately. Or Parlato, I don't know, Chad can send it to you. I don't know, do you, I don't know if you, I have your phone number, but um it it was kind of this interesting thing because it was related to this and just how alone and isolated people feel and i think i think like that's what i get out of it that's what i love about it people coming out of the woodwork like even on my streams like denise or mark i've been loving mark recently i don't know if you guys have watched every time that dude comes on he's just like solid gold he's so yeah, wonderful yeah and um it's just like people are so interesting and like the fact Neil, like how long were you just watching before you jumped on two years i think like that's crazy two years in the lurk yeah maybe a year like and a half. you have um like you're so yeah. active now and like you have so much to add it's just crazy to me that you were just sitting there silent for two years like it's you know it's crazy. Well, not, well okay, okay so part of that was i i think that stems from when Peterson says, if you're resentful, it's one of two things that someone's taking advantage of you or you're being immature. And yeah, in, in my process of sorting myself out, I would say, I felt like I had no right to push my bullshit on anyone else. And in some regard, it was like the journal became my bullshit uh, outlet. And, and that way I wasn't pushing it on my wife. I wasn't pushing it on my church. I wasn't, it, it was just going in. Some of it was probably coming out in my Bible studies, in the, but these were like sixty and seventy year old people that are, you know, they they can receive that that level of, you know, bullshit from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, but I think one of the things it's not the only thing, but one of the things that made me decide to come out of the lurk is that resentment was just going down, 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 and I felt like, oh, maybe I can add more joy than the other side, whatever the opposite of joy is. And and then Chad also asked, and I, as I got to know Chad, like. Something I said to uh, Demir is nobody puts themselves in situations where they look cringe. Nobody does that except this guy right here. He's the only guy I've ever seen do that deliberately because he pushes the casual liker away. <laughs> the person who casually would like Chad. <laughs> I like you as a friend or something. <laughs> me right but 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 what was so cool what was so cool about what happened last week what was so cool about it was that three people did the chad thing which is you go into the darkness and you say fuck it let's see what happens <laughs> let's see what happens three right. people did that and so i i will be amazed if we're not going out like this on a regular basis in two three five years from now but I, I think we're on the tip of something. So I'll, I'll lay my cards on the table, right? Like I, I have been in countless virtual game environments for 15 years, like, cause I've been a gamer and da, 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 da. And they all devolve and they're all, and maybe this will devolve too, but I have my doubts about that because I think we're centered around the right thing that we don't like to name it. And it, so if, if, if we reach the level of beyond a reasonable doubt that this is the right way to engage virtually, right? There are other virtual spaces out there and we reach beyond a reasonable doubt. This is the right way, or this is the best way that I personally have yet to see. What is our responsibility within the agency that we have to then share this better way with others, but share it, share it in a humble way, in a humble way, in a humble way. Okay. Not say so you got to get into TLC. Like, no, like whatever the humble way we could share it. And what I saw from Chad and Parlato and Tayo last week, I was like, Oh, this is it. This is it. And, and I actually, I only invited people that I thought would be appropriate to invite, you know, like people that I knew. Cause I, I, I picked up on what uh, Matthew was like a style that he was like, I, there's something about the way that he talked with Christian, that Christian, Oh geez, that guy way over the, over him. Yeah. That, 
I was just like, oh, I was super impressed with you there because I was like, you know, especially when you get when you get on a run, like you hit a run, you know that feeling when that when that flow hits, it, it's like, oh, dude, he's going, man. And so like I knew, and there was something about your temperament that I <coughs> that I recognized because like I'm around uh, in, in in the fellowship of AA, which is actually where the origin of the phrase fellowship of the spirit. That's actually actually where that comes from. But um, around those people, you you pick up on you you pay very close attention to how people operate, and so when you and when when people are operating with difficult people, you pay attention to the people that that do it well, and you can kind of see exactly how it's happening, you know, and like, and so I noticed some of that in uh, Christian and Matthew's conversation, and then obviously T Tayo has that, so of course I'm going to invite those two guys. You know, oh, who we got here? We got, do we have a new guest? Oh, we got, oh, Parlato keeps dropping. Oh, what I was, what I was going to add is that, uh, I actually met Neil and Matthew on the same night on that Christian Golden stream. We were both in there. And yeah, I saw that immediately. I was like, this guy can go. Mm -hmm. I want to hear, but like when you're in this, this setting, like we're in, you have to kind of take turns and try to be, you know, like a, a fair, but I was like, I want to hear this guy just go. <laughs> In Parlato, that's where you're talking about. Yeah, I just like, yeah. I just want to give him the space to go. So that was like where that, the seed of that conversation came from was from that stream. And, uh, and then the other thing I want to say, way back in this conversation, when we're talking about struggling to give yourselves compliments, and I know that this is kind of rub chat a little bit with uh, some of the orthodoxy and alcoholics and I'm anonymous. Uh, in my own journey to get to get here, I had to do a a rebuilding of self respect, and I think that sometimes the language that gets, I think Chad, you know, is like you have to love yourself. Like it's, there's like this, and I don't know if some of this is semantics or not, but um, you know, when you've been down, you know, I know Matthew, you've got a literal rap sheet. You know, when you when you've done things, um, and shame has defined you. And it's hard for you to hear anyone's voice, but especially maybe yourself uh, say, no, you did good there. And if you can recognize where you've done good, I think it actually gives you clarity to where you're, you know, kind of really fucking up more. Like it gives you more clarity. If, if it's not from self-aggrandizement, if it's not from a, like an arrogant place, but like from an honest place of like, you should be able to say, oh, I was kind to this person or I took care of somebody and, and that was good. Good job per yourself, but not like in a, like, oh, I, you know, I'm, I'm a good person, but like, no, that is good, you know? And so, I don't know. I, I think that there's a, there's a level of like, whatever self-respect is, is part of that love your neighbors, you love yourself. There's something in there. I agree. I, I do agree with that. Yeah. And, like I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> cause uh, believe me, I, I did not have, uh, I had uh, very much a, uh, 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 very e egotistical in the sense that I was self-loathing. Yes. For most of my life. So <laughs> like I, I know, and, but where, where the, self-respect was let's say reinforced or fortified came from my fellows and mm -hmm. then things like you know or like i would say something i would say sorry all the time like just randomly sorry or uh uh and my friends would be like dude stop saying you're sorry yep and i want you to stop that right now and then or i would be i would make self-deprecating comments and the guy would say, listen, if you're going to come and hang out with me, I don't want to hear any of that shit. Sorry, just don't want to hear it. Cool. And You said you, said you got that from your fellows, Chad. Yeah. Do you think Do you think they they demanded you to have that for, for yourself first? Or do you think they, 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 they gave you that before? before? Well, I think... Like, they, like, do you think they demanded... Do you think, like, like, that, like what you were just saying, they said, stop saying that. I think they were just, in my opinion, I, I don't know. I, I think they're gesturing towards saying... Hey, no, you need to have your self-respect. And once you get it, that, that's, that's why we want to, we want to give you the respect as well. But yeah. until you do it, go ahead. Yeah. Part of that is, I think they, 
well, they, they recognized that I wasn't the man that I saw. And so they just want, didn't want me to lie to myself, basically. Mm-hmm. And so they would, you know, want me to embody being more honest, you know, about, you're, like, you're not a piece of shit. You're not stupid. Don't say that. I don't, you know, and plus, I'm pro- I was probably getting annoying, you know, because it's also kind of self-centered, well, pop, like, taking behavior, you know. Well, so, and, and so I, I'd say, I mean, we're, we're right there. Behavior is beliefs, right? So I think that's what they're getting you mm. to is like, they want you to act that out. They want you to, to, to embody that. And, and the, the actions will then entail the, oh, I'm doing this. I, I do have respect. And then I do have this fellowship and it anagogically spins up, right? That's, and, and the other thing I wanted to touch on that I've kind of been mentioning this a couple of times in offside chat chats is, is this thing Neil was, was mentioning on, on, I see a tension between humility in the, in the silver city on the hill, because this is what I've been for me. I mean, I've been restless for a little while, but, but like what we did when we went out in, into the unknown to go, to go embody our embody TLC, the TLC spirit. It's like, we, we, I think we got it because in, encapsulated in the TLC spirit is that humility. And so it's, it's like this, it's kind of this Zen, co- it's, it's this paradoxical thing because by, by embodying the humility, we're, we're striving to the city. Like it's something, it's something like that. It's, there's, there's, that's where I've landed on, on that puzzle. But, but I, I, I say that because I, I think it's unavoidable on this, on, on if, if this is going to affect, uh, if this is going to affect us, if this is going to change, if this is going to bleed transfer, if, if we're going to take TLC, you know, uh, you know, beyond the, these little confines. Go ahead. Yeah. Can, can I throw you an example that I gave to Chad right after? So I, I, I said this to Chad, like the morning of, I, I, I don't know if I had a dream or whatever. It just popped in my mind. I'm like, ah, I understand what they're doing. So the, okay. The scene in fight club. So the scene in fight club, they already have a core and Brad Pitt just gets beat up by somebody and he lights a cigarette and he's like, got a homework assignment for y'all. You're going to go out and you're going to start a fight with the random stranger and you're going to lose. And then it shows how these people are trying to like, there's a guy who has like a briefcase and he slaps his briefcase down. He's pretty, so he's trying to, and Brad Pitt talks about, you know, most people, oh no, no, no. It's, it's Edward Norton narrating. He says, most people will really go out of their way to avoid getting into a fight. But if you put, but, and it's not the fight, the fight isn't it. Dia Logos is what we're doing. But it's like you're, you're starting Dialogos and then you're you're letting a seed die and seeing if it bears fruit. And, and that's the humility. It's like going in, going back out, going in, going back out, going in. Because with these guys that you guys make contact with, if if there's no further contact made, nothing's going to happen. It has to be an ongoing. Yeah, and if you and if you go into those situations uh, ideologically possessed and you all 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 it is is like a zero sum winners game of the truth and you just need to reform these guys and fix these guys that ain't gonna i mean that's like the opposite of tlc like that's what everybody else is doing flipping everywhere they'll just be annoyed and boot you and never want to talk to you again if here's here's what you need to make happen oh you're you're muted parlo but, but here's what you need to make happen is if after a few days they're like oh man where's matt like we miss matt where'd he go like if if you get to that point where they're missing you, GG. Well, also, so like um, for for me again, like what the, what I'm hoping that this whole channel is about is about uh, uh, basically toss uh, uh, making little thimbles of of water and setting them out in the desert so that somebody can trip over them when they need them and maybe they find them and they got something. That's the whole idea. So it's not even just about those guys on that stream because it's about people watching. That's a big part of it. You know, um, I, I'm a fisherman, man. Like that's what I. That's why I go to AA meetings. I don't go to AA meetings so I can get well. You know what I mean? I'm going there to fish. I, I'm looking for somebody that can help out. Somebody who wants help. You know, and because there's nothing like connecting with somebody like that. You know, and so that's that's a big part of it. But you can't, you know, <laughs> you can't just walk up in and there be like big, you know, big swinging. What's up, bitch? 
I got all the information you need. You know. Yeah, but but before before they got sent out, they needed to discern the spirits of who the right person to be sent out was. That's another creepy part of it was, and I mentioned this to Christian the other night, is it's almost like we did a three-layered persona of it because and, and I'll just do the lived experience thing is is I I didn't want to go in there and just you know win a conversation, though I did give them a lot of information, is is because I was dude, I was in that chat all day. I was in that in that thread for four hours. You know what I mean? I listened, I listened to them and I empathized with them. And uh <laughs> no I- I think that's hours, awesome. baby. better not like you revealed your superpower. You, you revealed no, your superpower, Matthew. Like you, you were in there. Well, chats like 20 minutes. I'm out. <laughs> well, and I wanted to just, just to say too, it's amazing. I loved your analogy because I think if, 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 if we're Dialogos club and their fight club, it's not about winning the fight, right? Nate, it was about, and it was about the confrontation of the fight. It was about the confrontation of Dialogos. And so it, exactly. I, I was in there and you know, I could tell that they cared, even though I would, I would, you know, I had been on that, you know, anti-government shtick, you know, three years ago. And so it's like, I had been so far beyond that, but, but I, I had been in that, in that thread in, in the stream still ba- bathing in, 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 you know, their, 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 uh, their care and what they were worried about. And so then Chad came in there and was super empathetic and was just like over and over, just like, damn, I didn't know the Canadian government was this fucked up. Damn. I didn't know this was that fucked up. And then Tayo came and hit them with this super perspectival, like, just like, you know, just, just What's kind of a Canadian? Like Canada sounds like Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> What's a Canadian? What do you mean by Canadian? Yes. It totally put them back on their heels. And then Socratic so then once I show up in my high viz, I show up in my high viz and I'm like, I'm not, you know, I've been, you know, you ain't gonna scare me. You can't eat me. And it's like, so I just start coming with, with, you know, my little, my, my, Tact, you know, my, my right. political spiel. Next, you got to write him a letter. You got to write him a letter. Parlato's letter to the Ephesians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I just, to tie a bow on that, I just wanted to say there was one guy in that stream that wrote specifically to Chad that he was interested in what we were doing. And then also there was a guy who talked on the stream who was connecting dots because he gave an example of Jap- Japan and how the Shinto religion was infused in all of their culture. And I'm like, all right, buddy, you're you're getting right to where I'm leading you. If you're connecting the Shinto recult, the Shinto religion to how that has affected all of that is Japan and the Japanese identity. Yeah, that it's religion. I, and the, the other piece on that is that um you uh Neil, when you said what two years ago. Like you lurked for two years and and the timeline of, I guess, like us three getting into this space, I think also lines up with political disillusionment. I, I, I might be putting that on you, but um, I think I, I don't think I realized it happened until this year. Like when I came in, it's what this is 2024. And I give shit. I give two shits about this collection coming up. Yes. And I think it was You're just like, less. so it was like my attention went somewhere else, you know, um, and I didn't, again, like my stories, I didn't know that, that it was going to go here. Um, but, but that just like, <laughs> are we worshiping Luke? Well, it's, it's like, we've all reached the realization we're living in a story and whatever that story is, it's way more boring than whatever story we believe we're participating in now. And I think we're all now, maybe we're all indoctrinated. Maybe we're all, but we're all coming at it from a very different place being indoctrinated. You well, said you said it in a in a more mythopoetic way than what I've been saying is that the 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 ultimate meaning is not found in the political. It's like that's that's exactly what you just said, Neil. But but and I was gonna say too, just because yeah, you know, the first time I ever hopped on a stream, it was with this guy Luke. I, I don't even know if he remembers it. Whatever I'm pointing, which are, it was with Luke and, and Nate on a Saturday morning. Yeah, and he may not remember. I, I, it sticks out in my little. Heart. I I, re- that was one of the I remember seeing you pop up. Yep. It, it well, it was. One of the things we touched on is I told him, is like, I had just gone down these rabbit holes. I was always reading. And because I, I take this shit serious, excuse my language. I take it serious. I was reading all, you know, we got into the Dugan stuff last night, Christian. It's like, I was reading all the taboo, ooh, scary, scary stuff. Yeah. Until I just, and, and honestly, one of them really gave me some insight. Uh, the Spangler stuff on just like, it, it's out of my control. Just, I disconnected. And, and 
I guess, you know, this is why you have to have conversations put on my tombstone. Now, th saying this out loud, it did kind of coincide with my total participation, my undivided attention kind of to TLC. But it was also, there was also like a an asymptote. Like, there was a seamless thing going. Like, all you know, I was... I was paying attention to, to, to both of these and, and it just, one of them was not sustainable and, and it, it, it wasn't as interesting is another way Neil said it. Well, I, I mean, I, I think I could, I could probably pinpoint it back to, um, I'll drop, I'll talk, of, uh, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole, but I think it, it's pertinent. So, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy's like whole thing was truth. And that really, I don't know if you know me, but that really like, I was like, truth, truth. Is there oh. somebody that wants to say, and I don't want to talk about the figures, but it, it, it captured my imagination it as an idea. It, okay. it, yeah, like as an idea. Like, is that even possible here? And I think whenever that, whenever it just was like, no, nobody's interested in even that idea. Like as like, the, can we, like that, I think it shut my brain down completely towards like what was about to happen this year. Um, so. Speak. I honestly think people, yeah, I honestly think people that, platform that way that say like i stand for truth they're snake oil salesmen or they're completely ignorant to any sort of relevant conversation that i don't want their leadership at all i mean unless they're platforming on a on just like a straight up platform of practical wisdom and policies like that kind of rhetoric and bullshit of like i stand for the truth shut up like next no thank you well i mean there, there's no next i think that was the thing well, like it just Luke, felt like Luke, there wasn't I'm, any. Next. I'm interested in your perspective on what we're talking about about going out. I'm interested in your perspective on that now compared to five years ago in the TLC or even like two or three years. You you have a bigger sense <clears> of the trajectory <throat> of the TLC over the last five years. I mean, yeah, it's it's totally different because there wasn't even a there wasn't a name on it or an idea of it or enough clarity as to what was even going on to have the kind of idea of like we want to share this with other people. You know, I mean, we didn't even, there wasn't enough of a, a naming and a body and an, and an entity to even do that with. And um, I don't know what's like, I think it's cool. I just, this, this is what's so funny about like the live streams I've been doing about evangelicalism and proselytizing and pushback that I've gotten is I'm just like, <laughs> I don't like, I just don't realize people, people don't realize how evangelical I am. I'm just like, if I have a conversation with anyone that's not just like superficial, hi, how are you doing? You know, have a good day. Like I'm talking about uh, God or theology or philosophy. Like, I mean, that's like all I talk about. And so I don't, I mean, maybe food ethics, maybe clothes or like straight razors or something. Mammon, I'll talk about mammon. <laughs> I, but I, can, I can tell you how I, I do the same thing, Luke, and I can give you a little bit of insight. Into why I don't think it's that crazy, brother, because look, everybody, we're, we're in this, we're in the, you know, the, the, the tyranny, the propositional tyranny, right? We're in the mammonistic sewage, okay? Politics is everywhere, but the total state, it's, it's like these people, I, I'm in construction and, and my, 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 fellow, my colleagues, they come and they have these issues, they have these struggles. And so if I have an opening, or I have I have a chance yeah. where I can be like, hey man, let me spin you a yarn for two minutes and I'll give you a little philosophical insight or a theological, I'll open a little theological, you know, rabbit. I do it, brother. I do I it. I love Carlotto so it much. Man. Lo I, thought, I, 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 I love He the said spirit. two minutes, but he meant two hours. <laughs> well, and I say that because that's why when like Neil, like the other day is I, w I was so fear First of all, I was fearless because of because this corner and following the logos. You know, I mentioned that with with Christian uh, on our first conversation. Uh, when I was real, I was in a bad. I, was, I had a crappy week. But you know, that fearlessness of just saying, you know, I'm going to follow the logos and it's, it's going to take care of me. And it's like, yeah, man, it's I, I've been I've been having these conversations. It's, so it's it's I, I wasn't I wasn't worried about about that aspect of it. Oh, it just to also mention part of my curiosity of going out is. It's not about us necessarily. Like I'm, I'm actually interested. Are, what are the other people talking about? So that's part of the venturing out. Like I'm actually trying to see, get a feel for what, because you know, like, uh, what, what the narratives are are often very different than what's actually being said in people's lives. You know, um, so like, there's not, you know, it's not. Uh, 
whatever the narratives were going on in uh, 2020 and 2021, those were actually like disconnected actually from the almost everybody that I ever ran into in person, right? Everybody now, I think what's different compared to 2020 and 2021 is that everyone now has a sense. They don't, they don't maybe articulate it yet, but they sense that the problem is not at the political layer. They sense that the problem is deeper. Go ahead, Perla. And I was, I was going to say, I can't remember where I've heard it. It's too many podcasts, but someone was saying that the daily wire guys, I don't know if it's, if it was PVK or, or it, yeah. someone was saying that the daily wire guys, like they, that's the, that's the rumor mill. That's the, that's the scuttlebutt there is that they're, they're so sick and tired of, you know, the, the bed they've made themselves that they have to lay in now. They made themselves in this political bed. It's like, all these guys are theological. Go ahead. Go ahead. He said it. Okay. He- Yes, Christian said. Okay, there you go. I'll put you uh, I think PVK. I think PVK said it too. I don't know who said but, it first. But yeah. you get my point. Is like it's yeah. and and so boy, do, you know. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I have friends on different spectrums of of the economic sphere and stat. But but don't you see what we're meant to do to create the mosaic vision of Luke Thompson? Don't you see what we're meant to do? We all come to this space from totally different backgrounds. I don't know diddly squat about these evangelical thinkers that Luke keeps bringing up. I don't know diddly squat about that, mm-hmm. but I know, I know gamers really well. And, and uh, president Foxman and I Noah and I, we are going to brainstorm. We're going to be thinking about this problem. Like how do we, how do we, how do we identify the flotillas of gamers who are even mildly interested in this stuff? And I have some ideas, uh, and but I don't th- think I personally, I personally don't think that that's the best approach. I, my, like I said, I would, well, maybe it is for you. For me, I'm just like, I'm going to be wandering out, like literally in the wild. What what are these weirdos talking about? I just want to know what they're talking about. I'm like, I had no idea what those guys were about. Like not a clue what those dudes were about. And <clears throat> that's why I was like, oh, this should be spicy. You know, once I kind of like, I pretty much immediately started to figure out, oh, these dudes are. Uh, not Can it be a both and though, Chad? It could be a both it, and. Well, of course, of course, you you guys are free to do whatever you wish. I'm just saying, if because here's how I am. If I go into it like with this kind of plan, it's like painting. If I go into a painting with a particular kind of plan of how it needs to look exactly, it's just gonna look like a blob of shit. That's I'm, my. I'm, I'm not really saying plan. I'm saying people that I can't, yeah, people that I actually get. That's what I'm saying. So, so those guys there, someone like Matthew, can can understand those guys and relate to those guys. I suspect much better than someone like me, knowing my background. Um, but if if there's a bunch of yeah, go ahead, Christian. You got no, it. I'm just saying. I me too. I did work. I was worked for a contractor for six months, but it didn't stick. I'm just saying, saying yeah. Well, is, is, you're, is you're saying, uh, you know, use our lived experiences, our, you know, yes. what, what, what we're good at and, and kind of tail. And I also get Chad's, you know, that's Chad's, you know, personality and disposition, right? He's, he's kind of just wants to go and see who just the conversation is his goal. Um, where your heuristic is, hey, I, you know, if we can maybe map some interests to, for a starting point. Um, I think, I think both could definitely work. Well, um, and what's, what's really strange is that they're the, uh, these screens, this this portal is a is a little bit of a leveler. It, I mean, I still think there's some con- contextual stuff like we're talking about, like lived experience. But uh, people learning how to do this, people learning how to engage this way, people using the resources like live stream or whatever is a it's a little bit of a skill that is now creating a whole new. I mean, I know it's existed, like you said, like in in gamer streaming, Neil, and, and different things. Like, there's been these spaces for sports and for um these other interests but has there really been like this kind of uh meaning space that's uh, that's not attached to um to the things that to the lesser things that we have been trying to like make meaning out of i guess um i don't know and and so there's it's it is a little bit like the wild frontier i feel like maybe and I know that Luke's been playing in that frontier for a long time, but it seems like what he was saying is that it is kind of uh, taking more shape a little. Well, and it's, it's a, I mean, yeah, because like video games, you're you're 
sharing talking about video games or you're sharing talking about being disgruntled with the Canadian government. I mean, what is, what's the unity that's actually holding together? We are, to me, TLC is a place where we're sharing each other. I mean, it's, it's deeply, deeply personal. And that's why I've always said it's a, it's a person space versus an idea space. Like we talk about, yeah, there you go. <laughs> we talk about, we talk about a lot of ideas, but really the meat of it is the randos, the sharing of your fears and insecurities and doubts and stories and traumas and um, all of that stuff, you know, but also as, as things go along, successes and art and generativity. I mean, it's a, I have no idea if there's another kind of space this way. And I agree that it's a, it's a learned thing. I think most people, it's like when I, cause I mean, I'll talk to people locally about TLC stuff and like they have a little bit of context. I was bringing up this guy at church. I was talking today, he's been watching Peugeot, but like largely people just don't even, they don't get it. Cause I was saying, you, cause this guy's really smart. I like him. He's a, he's a, he's a friend from church and, and I was like, this is really cool. I'd love to talk to you about it more. Like I could even like maybe have you on uh, as like a podcast thing. And he's like, whoa, that sounds intense. And like, that sounds intimidating. And, and he's like, I want to like really, he did something where he was like, I'd really want to do my research or understand this well before I would do that. But like, even that is betraying like a, you don't get it. Like this isn't primarily about ideas. Like you don't need to get all your shit together so that you're, presenting something like you're an academic like that's not what we're doing it's so it's so sad that it's like i mean this is how i took that it's like i can't have a an hour human to human conversation anymore and this is where i want to take it because me me and luke for sure we're on that philosophical relationality stuff i got the book literally right here relationality is ground but it's like it goes both ways it's like this is where my brain went what we're doing here is we're getting the relations right so even at the philosophical, the relationality as ground, we're starting embodied at the relations, right? And so this is what I was telling them in the blue collar string. It's like that allows everything else. The, the totality and the full uh, 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 texture of Neil and Chad can come alive in this community. He doesn't have to be anti-government Chad. Neil doesn't have to be pro, pro uh, a video game Neil. He, he can be all that Neil is in, in, in TLC because we're starting at the proper starting, but we have, we have, we have landed at the bottom. We've gotten to ground. We've gotten well, to, to under I would, I would, I would give that a caveat on the fact that I think in our minds, there is still a fact that this is public. And I think that has that, like that, that doesn't, there, there is a boundary to that. And I think it's a, it, it's an appropriate there. You could say it's an appropriate boundary. I don't know. Luke seems like he's you know disagreeing with you. Me. know what? I mean, I don't know, and maybe part of it's just personality. Like you just said that, and and like I've not when I'm doing a stream or anything. I guess there's like comments on the side, and I'm like a little bit aware of it. But like, I just I don't I don't ever think about it, and I don't care. Like, and that's just a weird temperament. Like well, a lot of people have said they have hesitation to want to put things online or share their thoughts and stuff. And I and I'm always like I don't I couldn't care less. Like it just doesn't. Just, what people are gonna go ahead. I understand that hesitation. What broke my heart, what breaks my heart is that we have a culture full of got of, of those guys that I don't know if it's about the online thing, but it's about the, can I talk for an hour thing? It's like, it's, 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 that's what I was getting is I think we, I, the notion of intimacy is good. That's a good point too. Well, well, but like this guy will talk to me. I mean, we talk all the time at church in real life, but there's something weird about the there's something weird about this this thing, and Paul has said this a lot, is TLC is a place for people with nothing to lose. There is something about the idea of, it's one thing to have a conversation with me at coffee hour for a half hour or whatever about all this stuff. And then for some reason though, I don't know. Be held for some to reason, it, be, they'll be held to it if, the, if it got around to their coworker and they said something about their faith that they're embarrassed about or something like that. And I'm not, and I'm not saying I don't I'm not shaming that person for that. That's I, I that's what I'm saying. I think it's right. real. And when when you know when yeah. Chad asked me to do my very first podcast with him, I was very nervous. And I think I'll, even though I had a conversation with that guy Jacob Camomile TV, uh, after we talked, he kind of expressed that like he had like a vulnerability. I call it this a vulnerability hangover. You're like, oh my gosh, I just said that. <laughs> 
and <laughs> and it, and that's gonna go for, for on the internet the and there's yeah. probably gonna be at least a you know 100 or so people like maybe that pay attention to that and it's like oh and then technically my you, parents you know what, can see that I, I think it has something to do with how rock bottom someone has hit and i suspect with I, I suspect Chad and Parlato at least have hit a harder rock bottom than I've ever hit. But I but I hit a hard enough rock bottom where Do, you, the I, shit's I was, given the shit's given diminished a lot. It, not not only that, but it was the Petersonian where, where Peterson says I'm people think I'm not afraid to say the things I say, but I'm more afraid of the alternative. And I started I, don't. I, I I started so so when I said in my initial Randos conversation with Chad, I said uh, it was the line from The Untouchables. What are you prepared to do? Like, if you're really a Christian, like if, if you're really a Christian, like what are you prepared to do? That scares the heck out of me. Amen. That scares the like it scares me. But like the the first thing to be prepared to do and, and this happened. Let me tell you a really quick story. So when I was becoming Catholic, um, I had this was before COVID. I had uh, I had like a, a, a web uh, meeting, like a Zoom meeting before it was common. And I had a, a picture. I had an icon or something. I think it was that. That's like, right. You see mm. that? Like right there, mm -hmm. like showing. And and then I said, oh, that that might spark some weird comments or things. So I'm going to I'm going to move that for the Zoom. Right. And then I had another situation where it was Ash Wednesday and I was on site at a hospital and I had meetings with physicians throughout the day. And I said, oh, it's going to be much. And, and there was a priest giving out ashes in the hallway. And 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 I said, oh, if I I just walked right by because I'm like, ah, it's going to be an annoyance to explain this. And then it hits it hits me after I just denied him twice. And, uh, I, and, and like after that, I'm like, fuck, like, like, yeah. I'm like, fuck this. I am not denying shit from now on. I'm not denying. <laughs> wow. I'm not doing it. And no, but seriously, I felt really strongly after that where I was like, I'm Peter. <laughs> I'm not. Man, there's and something so, so sa sacramental about all of that right there. That was beautiful. Yeah, that, was, that, means, that means a lot a, to me. But so, so when Chad's that's, like, if Chad's yelling at me for talking about Christ too much, it's like, yeah, I'm with it. <laughs> <laughs> like, or or if, if, if I'm thinking on the Luke Orthodox stream, I'm like, Luke talks about orthodoxy more than he talks about Christ. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm with. I'm gonna talk about Christ. Hey, that makes me feel good, Neil, because that was probably my one self critique looking back on that uh, foreign live stream. Is I thought I was maybe a little too Christ heavy, but that makes me feel good. Anyway, that's all. <laughs> that was for me watching you Carlotto in there was like that was part of, to me. I, I I got a sense that that was your stance too, and you weren't gonna back off of it you weren't going to push it but you weren't going to back off of it either that's a, that's exactly right it, the only thing i thought re, refined and it still it wouldn't be right because it's not the sacred it's christ it's christ it's christ built the west okay that's what we were talking about that was mm. what the but but but, just if, for if I, but if i'm pro, okay real quick if i'm proselytizing like i i get that completely it's like how are you loving that's the question it's like how are you loving and that's and not how, trying to get how, an idea yeah. across though yeah, that's yeah. that's I think that's where where everything landed, at least in the sections that I was involved in on that on that topic was if you're trying to love somebody, you're not trying to get an idea across. Well, OK. And see, that's all right. See, all right. I just want to get this out there. And that's why I went the way I went. I just want to put this exactly uh, concretely. It's explicit. I'm on. That's the way I love them, Neil. And I don't, I'm not picking on you know because that, that you were the one that that was the I way tell. I loved it. I'm only yeah. looking forward to give Parlato a kiss. And, 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 well, I know, and, and see, I'm gonna do the Italian thing, the extrovert. I'm gonna I'm gonna point the the weird. I'm gonna be weird. Is that that's why I went? That's why that went down that way. That's why I. That's why I. That's why it happened that way. Is because that was my way of loving them men. That's why I was. That's the way I was gonna love them men. Is they had to hear that. Mm, they had to hear, hey, brother, I've been there. I was just there two years ago. If you really wanted to get into some real life stories, talking about hitchhikers, I probably got some gnarlier stories than that to go with you. But but for what we were talking about, for the 20 minutes I had, because I knew I didn't have long, I had to get I had to get that information. And see, it sounds bad. Like I'm trying to give them the information. It was, I had to give them that love is that I could synthesize some of those heady abstract ideas to a message of, hey, man. It's about the people and the values. And so y'all can y'all can navel gaze and, and be all bummed out about politics all day. But until y'all are really investigating, embodying 
the value conversation. Yeah, but here's what's great. So, like, I think, okay, to answer the question earlier, what touched me about it is I didn't hear you trying to sell something. I just saw you trying to sh share your story. Yes. And that's it. You just, here's my story. Take it or leave it. You know? That's what I was trying to say. Yep. Uh, well, and all, all you can do is, I mean, I mean, it's like a first, this is where, like, there is no set, there is no set formula in any circumstance. And I think being godly and discerning and listening to the spirit in any circumstances, uh, probably not even, not even like in a deliberative way, an analytical way, but just feeling the flow and kind of like a dance wooey way, what people need and just responding in kind. Maybe people need simple apologetics and propositions. Go ahead and do it. I don't have to go into it about my big anti-propositionalist spear. I don't need to talk to them about propositional tyranny. Like whatever, that can be down the road. They maybe need that in 10 years. But maybe right now what they need is just some, you know. Money. Like some, yeah, some money or some, some money. Alms. I need, I need some money. Alms. They may just need some alms. <laughs> you you're said in that lint. a little too smoothly. You're, you're, in, you're lint. They need some alms, brother. <clears throat> but, so, okay, so. <laughs> got the gold chain. Give me some cash. Back to Neil's whole thing about like the, the what's so cool about just in general about, about um, let's say groups of people is like, we're all we are all different, right? So like, thank God there's not five chads in here. We'd have to like we'd have to flush my toilet, my phone down the toilet. You know what I mean, it's like that because like you have it'd just be insanity if there was just. <laughs> so it's nice that you have all these different people that and that's what makes up the body of humanity, or let's say the body of Christ, right? And so, <clears throat> like the uh, a reason why I'd like to do the approach that I want to do, which is. I want to see, I want to see what other people are thinking about, and I'm also operating out of a different kind of frame. The frame I operate out of is that in the AA frame, it talks about, uh, oh, we got it, oh, we got another guest, we got another guest. Oh no, I who is it? Don't let him in. We all got a guest. I think it's Alan. Hey. <laughs> oh yes, I was totally right. Dang! Look at this guy. This guy has got to go get my citizenship papers. So. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I don't think Alan and I have shared a screen before. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we were in one uh, were live we? stream. With, Are you uh, doing the tomahawk chop? You racist! No, yes, I was yeah. extending my he was, hand. He was. Uh, <laughs> Roll tide. I don't know. Roll he started extending the tomahawk no. chop, and I got really worried for a moment. <laughs> and I said, "Christian, oh, oh. Christian, be a Christian, go. Christian, be a no. Christian." A two and yeah. one, a two for geez. A whole life. I could throw a left turn in here. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, we don't do that. Um and we needed we needed an homage, didn't we? We needed a little um, little PVK. Hey Alan, you're you're in the you're in the com com comedian sphere, right? You, you like you like yeah. comedy comedy yeah, stuff? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you offend, you heard of Tim Dillon? <laughs> Yeah, 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 I know. Yeah. yeah, you know, he just kind of, he just kind of had a, a little bit of a moment on a podcast. Are you aware of his like religious, spiritual kind of confession? You hear that? No, 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 no. no? I, I don't follow him as closely, but I follow him in the Latter Day Saints. Yeah, yeah, Matthew, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you know this, but he's gay. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. Hey, Did you not see that we were is, doing? Nobody believes it. Yeah. Nobody believes Tim Dillon's game. That's by true. Way. Yeah, they, they all all the his comedian friends give him shit about it. They're like, yeah, we believe that about as much as we think Tim is gay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, well, we, I got a question for you, Alan. This is a good this is a good question. Because I I'm kind of like want some new topics. Um <clears throat> okay, as as a comedian, right? First of all, do you like that label? Secondly, while while having that label, do you feel a certain kind of like nagging, gnawing pressure to be the funny guy? And if so, is that fucking suck or no? Uh, <laughs> How's why do you think answer? I do anything in my life to be high and lifted up and glorified? I mean, you know, is you know, I mean, you know. Uh, no, uh, hey Tim, hey t hey Alan, tell us a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's the, here's uh, my 
T yeah. Rock impression. You're all wasting your time. It's very stupid. Uh, <laughs> not so good. In the corner. I don't like it. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> Um, <laughs> not a good guy, Chad the alcoholic, trying to stop me from doing my impression of T Grog. Uh, oh, big problems. Uh, no, the uh, uh, comedians, comedians, fine. I mean, I don't really like. It's stupid to throw it out, especially among like regular people, because I mean, you know, they, they they just get confused as to what you mean. Usually, do comedy's fine, like do shows and stuff. They mean like you comedy. mean like a grocer. Have you ever met this person? Have you ever done this show? That's extremely. Do you know this? Uh, yes, I know everyone in comedy. Just like anyone who's a Christian has read the Bible forwards and backwards, and you know, lives out every day. You know, so when I call myself a comedian, it means yes, I'm the funniest person in the room. <laughs> Just like being a Christian means you're the best person in the room, you know. Uh, so <laughs> had to live with that one. But uh, sorry, is this going out? Are we gonna live stream? Is this gonna be posted or is this just hanging? <laughs> uh, we did the top just, off just show this part. And I wasn't. Yeah, just this part. I, exactly. I've actually got to drop out, guys, because I'm getting oh called uh, okay. for dinner. But it's been great. And Alan, take over. Do everything yeah. that I would have done in your stead. Yeah. The gossip about Neil that I have is that he's <laughs> actually he's gay as well. So, um, but uh, yeah, I mean the pressure to be funny. Uh, I, I mean, yeah, like it's the, like the positive reinforcement loop of like then you realize like I can get laughs, I can be funny, and like yeah, there's part of you that does that, and like you're like, oh, I'm gonna sustain myself off this. I'm gonna live off of the juices of being funny, but. Like if you're, and it's really brutal because I did it like somewhat seriously and you see people who are like ex actors and actresses who never, <laughs> who thought like, I'm not going to make it here. And I always like think of the scene in a movie where like the good guys need the help of like a semi bad guy and the bad guy's like, you must be desperate to come to me. And I think of all these like cute and handsome actors and actresses that like go to comedy to be like, well, the acting isn't working out. So, and then I'm like, you must be desperate to come to improv comedy to become <laughs> famous. Like this is, you're very, very desperate. If you think that like improv comedy is about to save your acting career. It's acting uh, churn. Yeah. But uh, so uh, Alan, okay. what's, What's the dr what's the dream with comedy? Um, probably like to have enough wealth and stuff to not need God anymore is probably <laughs> the goal. Is to I mean that's a good one. Don't that's a good one, but just just like lay you know. it out in steps. Like how are yeah, you gonna yeah, accomplish yeah. that wealth well, that's, where you don't need God? That's my book that's coming out. How to become famous <laughs> enough to not need God in ten steps. And it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Um, probably compete with Peterson. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, I've got a, I've got a role too. Alan is nice to like yeah, meet you a little yeah. bit more. We'll see you. Yeah, around. yeah. Thank you, Christian. All yeah. right, bye guys. But uh, bye. no, I mean uh, the thing with comedy is like you. I mean, this is so <clears> lame, <throat> and I hate talking about. Like the great thing about comedy is you can just do it, and you never have to talk about the process or anything. So talking about the process and everything, I think, is super lame. But uh, like once you realize like, like, I don't know if you saw my randos convo, but I talked about that summer camp I worked at and like being funny was just such a natural fit in the community. Cause you do like every day you had to announce the activity you were teaching that afternoon. So you'd be like mm -hmm. canoeing, we're going to canoe around this Island, you know, but like you can make it literally like it was encouraged to make them funny or to like <laughs> all the time. Like there's a play we wrote every year and it's those plays that we wrote, they don't exist anymore. Like, no one's like, oh, we, oh, like, we got to remember that. We need to film it. It's like, they, they suck. And, they, but the kids are like uproariously <laughs> laughing. People are getting hit in the face with like whipped cream pies. They're stupid. They're fun. Like, people are laughing so much more at that than any comedy special you'll ever go to. But you'd be like, but technically, the better comedy is the professional. Yeah. Is Louis, Louis it seems so ephemeral. And like, you made no money from it. Yeah. 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 And, and so I'm not saying like you shouldn't hone the specific skill of comedy, but like when you realize like that communion, that like enjoyment, like looking for ways, because I've really stepped back from like sort of the more like semi-professional or like serious side. 
But I mean, I even did announcements for a long time at church and basically just turned it into like five minutes of stand up comedy. <laughs> and like, you know, just that, like, you know, and people liked it. I mean, it's just like people like, I mean, 10% hated it, but 90%, you know, it is so funny being funny because if you can like get the forward momentum, like if you get like 70% of the group laughing, everyone socially is obligated to laugh to be normal. Yep, yep. I can like look at the audience and be like, oh, you hate comedy, you hate comedy. <laughs> Like, it's very funny, especially like girls who can't hide. I don't know why, but girls generally can't hide it. So they'll just be like, yeah, that's so funny. Yeah, 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 keep talking. I want you to talk more. And I'll be like, and then this happened and blah, blah, blah. Oh, so what are we, where are we going after dinner? So, and it's just like, I mean, and like, you don't want to be a jerk and like just dominate the convo. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, so finding ways to, that skill set is so like fungible and usable in, in so many places. Like it's really not letting the comedy dictate like, oh, well I have to go to the mountaintop to study at the feet of the master. It's more like, okay, <clears throat> like you have this skill set, you can hone it more, you can get better at it, but like, where does it plug in? And like seeing it at a summer camp, even seeing it like here with you guys, like I think it makes people like approach me like at church when I did announcements, people I never spoke to, who never spoke to me before, will just come up to me and be like, oh, I love you. Oh my gosh, that was funny. That was great. And you know, you try and use it for good because obviously you could use that to be like, yeah, I am the best, aren't I? And I don't need God to <laughs> buy. Hmm. Or you can be like, I'm going to use this for good and be like, oh, well, I'm so glad you walked up to me and said, hi, like, what do you do? Who are you? And you know, then you can actually start this relationship. But doing like comedy semi-seriously you just get such a uh you just get such an insight into people who are just like i just want the power i just want the ring of power i just want to be funny enough and like they don't care about the craft they don't enjoy it for its own sake they're just like i just want to be a famous comedian i saw i saw you know this sold out show at madison square garden and now i want to be that person on the stage that so, everyone's paying attention to that's so interesting because i bet i feel like you know the the funny the funny guy who's just kind of just for the spirit of funny, like I, those are some of the best, most fun, fun people to be around. I bet the funny guy for, like you said, the instrumentally, I bet that's some of the worst, nastiest people to be around. <laughs> I bet they're like the worst, like literally, like you see what I'm saying? Like so close, but so anyway, I just wanted one weird, irrelevant comment is you just reminded me, I, I, you jogged my memory of your randos. Your randos is one of my favorite randos. I love that randos. I'm I grew up. I didn't do the summer camp thing at all. I have no, I, I had no, I no. Hmm. Anyways, I had no insight into that world or anything like that. I just I I ate that up, man. You did such a good job of presenting that. If I'm blessed with kids, like you, definitely put that on my in my mind of like, yeah. Anyway, that's so. thank, yeah. Thank yeah, you. I didn't like it that much. Oh, um, hey, sorry, Chad. Uh, can I talk to you after about one of the people in the talk? Wait, who is <laughs> just, I, I need to talk to you after just about someone. Don't worry. Luke, don't think it's you because it's it's someone else who just... Oh, okay. Yeah, How's yeah. That, uh... Linked this damn thing. What's your name? Alan? Alan? I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> the, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean... My jokes, you know? Fuck <laughs> 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 Well, okay, so um, yeah, that's why I hate trying to be funny because I'm never funny when I try to be. But I, I was at, uh, I went to this uh, a YMCA camp, which I guess is like a church camp thing, over when I was like a kid, and I played Forrest Gump uh, at the play, so that was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. um, but I, yeah. So my question also is is about it's not about the process as much as it's like, do you sense that um, like where do where do you uh, are you like, do you, do, do, do you suffer from like existential terror or something or like, you know, self-loathing and like, you know, like, like your classic comedians who are like, oh, I'm so funny. And then like, we really just turn the frown upside down and all that stuff. Like they developed the comedic impulse because they were so sad and alone. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think, um, well, <laughs> this is, uh. I think part of that is, I mean, true, but a large part of that is also a selection bias of like so many comedians don't become famous. Even comedians I love who are like, I think they're so funny and good are making $32,000 a year in New York City. And they mm -hmm. live in like a shoebox in Northern Harlem and <laughs> it's crazy. So like 
you almost do have to be like a little bit incapable of any other thing to be a, like a <laughs> comedian to spend 20 years developing to be as good as some comedians are it does so i mean that's not like you know mythological or you know like glamorous but like i think there is a selection bias of like uh like you know like one comedian ah, dang uh i forget her name but she like literally was in a mental institution uh now like she's like semi famous uh is uh maria bamford and she's really funny mm. um but uh yeah i think but yeah yeah i mean i think I mean, you, you can be famous in so many ways. There are so many just being ultra extroverted or just like really noticing. I think my little version of that would just be like ultra being ultra self-aware. Like it's really hard. Like, like it, those just be social situations where like, like I, you just like shake someone's hand and you're sort of sternly listening to them and like, you, I just am so aware that this person is like thinking like, what's his deal? And I'm thinking, what's their deal? And I just like, I'm laughing. Like I literally start laughing. Cause it's like, they might think like, Oh, this guy's been to this church for a long time. Or, you know, if I meet them in church, Oh, like, you know, they, you know, and they'll be like, Oh, you know, be careful. Like, are they super like, you know, with the language and like, and just like, la I, you know, I'll just literally start laughing. And some people would be like, well, girls don't like it when you're silly. And I'm just like, how can you not be silly when I'm just like, I could stand here and be like, yeah, I'm pretty busy, but uh, I got to go. Yeah, I'll, I'll catch you later. And they'll be like, that's the way to like, you know, that uh, the girls will like you better if you're like that. You're mysterious and handsome, you know, like, I'm like, or I could just like be, who the, you know, laugh my head off because the idea of like me pre pretending to be a mysterious stranger for four weeks so that I can ask her on a date is like, how could you live your life that way? I always want to ask guys that. Like, how do you like, like, how do you live your life that way where you're like putting on this front and it doesn't, it's not just dating or whatever, but like you all the time, you know, like, uh, listen, some people are that way. Some people like me are just like Ryan Gosling from the movie drive and we just drive really? and kick ass. Dang. Okay. That's just Dang. what we do. Dang. I was really sense. I was hoping you wouldn't say that cause you'd find out I'm such a loser and Luke's so cool. Dang it. <laughs> 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 no, but yeah. So, I mean, I just think that like, that like awareness of just like these little things where like, you just can't. You just can't like act as, you know, like you just break through the fourth wall of that, whatever that thing is. It's just like these tiny, tiny micro <clears throat> fourth walls of like, this is the situation. We're in an interview and I'm asking you this question. And, you know, like even in interviews when people say like, so what are your greatest strengths? Like my <clears throat> game plan every time is just to know, I know you don't want to ask me that question. So I'm just going to steer you away and make you talk about yourself. And like, that's because I know you don't want to talk to me about what my big, biggest strength is. You want to talk about how the vending machine is broken on the fourth floor and you didn't get a Twix or whatever. Like, so once you're aware that like, oh, this person, you know, you could say like, my greatest strength is the fact that I care too much about my company that I work for. Or you could just be like, hey, I, you know, I'm really good at this. But like, you know, you, you ever have one of those moments where you're just like worried about X and they'll be like, I have worried about X all the time. And, you know, and people are always like, those 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 underneath the those things that are locked behind the fourth wall like they're always sort of like trying to get get out they're always like you know the you know the one who the person who has to be really strict who like clearly doesn't want to or like this dynamic that's slowly breaking down where like someone's in authority and someone's you know not in authority but you can tell that like that's breaking down i don't know that's a long rant comedy's hard but uh similar you know, i have sorry, a similar continue. experience um I think I think similar phenomena. Uh, it's coming from a little different space. Was um, after doing after being incarcerated after doing like uh, almost almost eleven months uh, in a county jail, and and how that and first of all you're in a different world uh, of of human relating like you are in a different realm. Um, but the what I was want to comment here and what you made me thought was uh, the transition back out. And then in that communication and relating with people who who have still been in, in you know, on the rat wheel the whole time. And I had just checked out mm. to a different realm. Right. And so the transition of going from that realm and then in interfacing back into this realm, dude, it was it was literally like I had it was literally like I could read minds. Like that's mm -hmm. the best way to say it is I everything people would say 
I could see behind that fourth. That that's that was the connection. Is is everything they would say? I was I, I was I just did eleven months of just thinking and just being around, you know, different kinds of humans. Let's just say that. Um, yeah. And so it was just yeah, it was just a very very. It was almost like the the the, the, the my intuition had been had been had been sharpened and my you know, the disruptive strategy of, of not being in the toxic rat race for so long, you know, I got plucked out, you know, I, I'd fell out with, with my life choices. And then when I got back in, I was just, I was able to, another, another image comes to mind is that Slytherin thing. Like, I don't know. I, they would say something and I would hear the other message behind what they were saying. Like every time, like every time, like, like, anyway. yeah, no, I mean, that's exactly like, and when you break in and out of these worlds and these dynamics, uh, yeah, it's so, um, yeah, and, and they just get switched on their head and this this dynamic that you think is so clear, uh, you know, like, I mean, I use the camp all the time, but like, it's so funny because at the camp, you'd be really respected by being a good counselor and everyone's just like, yeah, this guy's the man. And then the parent of the kids that you're counselor for would meet, come and be like, you're a 22 year old idiot, like get out of my, you know, some were nice and some were great, <laughs> but they would just be like, what do you mean you're like respected? Like. You look you know, position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just some random position. And like, you know, I sent him here so I could get 24 seven daycare for seven weeks. Like, I don't care about you at all. Uh, and and so the point just be, I mean, you know, you're you, so like that dynamic of, you know, this person's respected can just be so sh even though even though for seven weeks, you're totally everyone treats you well. And like, you try and be good. And you try and like, uh, create this dynamic and reinforce these good patterns, then they, it can just be shattered in a moment. Uh, but yeah, like you're saying, I mean, I'm sure if you're outside, yeah, like people, when you, you leave those dynamics and you come back in, you can just like see them so clearly because you've been living in a different world. So it becomes so obvious you've been, you know, swimming in the different water. Um, but yeah, 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 absolutely. It's like, um, yeah. Uh, and it's kind of fun because when you just call it out, especially once you get that like name tag of being like a joker or like a, someone who's funny, you get to just say it. And everyone, instead of being offended, just laughs. And it's kind of wild because you realize like, oh, if they didn't know me and I said this, like someone would punch me in the face. But like because you get the like the jester yeah. tag, like you can just say some of this stuff. You kind of oh, so so that... talked about yeah. like, way, 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 way back in the beginning, probably right before Matthew even came in, is pastor's voice. Like pastor, like that, that uh, enchanted pastor. The pastor speaks when he gets into a certain tone and he really wants to, I can't really do it well, but like it's the same, similar, it's another kind of a strange mask that you could, that mm. people have. And I don't know, there's something about that too. So for me, I find it highly suspicious, but... <laughs> I'm just highly suspicious of everybody. Yeah. It's the Sam no. Harris thing. Sam Harris thinks his his uh you know his metaphysical uh opinions are more valid because he talks slow. <laughs> it's like, okay. Mm -hmm. My, yeah. like, that, that, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I mean it, it is like I mean, this is all the like other like the ways in which we like put on on the opinion and uh yeah, the pastor's voice. I was thinking you said you were suspicious of it, but yeah, like of absolutely like you see that pastors will say certain things and be more confident or more like this is right this is wrong from the pulpit because that sounds better saying like who knows like you know is like that's a little like wait there are gray areas this isn't fun uh like but like then you talk to them off you know off camera off stage whatever you want to call it like and it's much more like, well, when we say that, what we really mean is that <laughs> Jesus is love, you know, and, uh, you know. Yeah, but it makes me think of, kind of, have you ever heard of people talk about people that personally knew Michael Jackson and like his public voice was different than the voice he had when he was talking to like Eddie Murphy or something? He'd be Was more like, <laughs> yeah, he said, <laughs> yeah. He would just be like completely different and like cussing and like talking with a deep voice and shit. And I, I don't know. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, hilarious. I mean, think for being a performer is like the ultimate, like when you get off stage, people think that's who you are. 
I mean, right. especially like a comedian where you're like performing, but you're like, you're just yourself. There's no, you're not, you're not an official character. Like people get really, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of like you sort of have to judo flip them. Like I would always try and get people who came up to me after shows to talk about themselves. Cause like, I'm going to disappoint you by if they're like, Oh, what's, what are you doing next? Going home and waking up and going to my nine to five job guys. Like I'm pumped to do that. You know? And they're like, that's not the guy who was on stage who was like being funny. That's not part of the persona. And <laughs> we thought you'd have Coke. Well, I was, yeah, I was yeah, just yeah. Say, we, we, we all have these personas to a degree. Right. And then, I mean, to and we can just step in a freaking uh, down the rabbit hole here with the, is is the, the, they're covering up the the self, right? The super sacred self. It's like, oh gosh, what it what is that? You know, but but my, my I guess what I would say is it's almost and there's something analogous to the to the to the uh, garments of skin, the techno technology, but it's almost the 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 thickness of that mask that you have to put on is almost ex correlates to the, to the, to the, to the, to the lack of, to the lack of work or, 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 or comfortability or, uh, or, or love that you have, that you have, uh, you know, uh, uh, uh doled out to yourself. I feel like it's because if, you know, you, you only have to put on such a, such a, such a heavy mask because there's some, because there's such, you know, there's such a shortage, there's such an atrophy or something. And then I would also say the wearing of that, it, it, it kind of compounds, right? The wearing of that mask is now you're not doing that work on, on yourself. You're not giving that, you know, you're, you're, you're playing into that. And so, and then also it's like this, it's this perennial problem too, because first of all, who the hell are you? Who, who is the super sacred self? It's like, you could do that your whole life. You could, you could investigate that your whole life. And then, so, so you won't escape it. Like this is the co-identification thing, right? This is the, this is the perennial problem of, of, of the, of the Buddhism that John Vervecki is trying to get you to, to understand is, is you always have to co-identify, co-identify. There's always an agent arena coupling, but that is never sufficient. That is never, that will never <laughs> encapsulate the totality, the, 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 you know, the profund, the profundity of whatever the heck it, this is, this experience is. And so you, you, you have to have the mask, you know, I have to go and put on mechanic Matthew. I got to go pretend I love slinging wrenches and grease all day. And, and, you know, it's like, and, and, and it was, I just, I just said it because you, you, I guess there's a, there's an optimal, there's an optimal way of, of being able to, to, you know, uh, cycle through those masks, you know, put on dad, you know, Luke has to put on dad hat and then he has to put on live stream hat, but you want I guess the optimal get is to get that harmonization of of you're not you're not atrophying you're not skewing that super sacred self that that whatever that is that inner alignment that feels right because right it's, there's no propositions that will do it right there's only a participatory ooh this is me like that's what I was saying with the Chad thing you know, I, I said it in the in, in Christian stream the other night and I, I talk too fast sometimes I don't get whole ideas out and it sounded like I was like oh that was such a me thing and it sounded like I was taking credit for it but what I was meant to say was the movement of the the little competitive spark in me to say Chad's not as extroverted as me. That was what I meant by that. So me, it's like that's what I meant by like that authentic whatever this super sick. I don't know what it is, but boy, I identified it with that because I, I I communicated to my little TLC friends. I was like that was that was such a Matthew thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> well. What do you guys think? I, I personally, I want to keep going, but I just to be I'm honest, cast out. Uh, yeah, man, I gotta do dinner. Yeah, it's, I gotta yeah. eat too. I wanna, I wanna ask Alan one funny thing that I did recently, and I want all you guys to say if you think this is funny. This is very much my sense of humor. So, um, my uh, wife was planning this Saturday because our kids are gonna be, my son's gonna be working, and both my daughters I think are gonna be babysitting or something. And, um, and so we just had the night free. And so she, she was planning this game night with these two other couples that we've gotten together with before. And so she sent out this group text to everyone, you know, both couples, if they want to do this game night. And uh, one of the couples said at some point <clears throat> that we know a little bit more, with, like it's just not going to work for them or whatever. So then my wife replied and said, okay, well, that's all right. We can still get together with the other couple, either just on their own or we can add another couple or whatever. And I hadn't been involved at all yet. She had just been running the whole thing. And I just replied, no, if the other couple can't make it, I don't want to do it with just them. 
<laughs> and just and just like left it cold. Just like didn't say anything, no emojis. <laughs> and I love to do that kind of stuff all the time. And my wife just like can't handle it. Cause I just will leave it dead like that forever. Like if they never responded, I would just leave it. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, that's, that's uh, one of my favorite maneuvers, especially the commitment. Like it's the this is a phrase that I oh, I love. The best jokes are only for you. They're no, all, no one favorite. will ever know. Dude, no one will ever know. I've never heard anyone else say that, but that's exactly my narcissistic type of comedy. It's like my favorite jokes are just for me. They're that's only for it's me. Norm. Yeah, is that? Oh yeah, it's oh. the Norm Macdonald. It's like yeah. the ultimate in like. Oh, I, I like, oh my gosh. Uh, we were like, had a list of all the small groups at our church and I, I had one, but I, I like edited it. So it, all the logos and all that was on one page. And then I just edited mine. So it make it 10% bigger than everyone else's <laughs> like just big enough. And I'm like, no one will ever see this. Like, uh, just like literally it's small enough that you wouldn't tell just by skimming it. But I'm like, it's so funny to be like, and then finally, like one lady who like tried to post on social media was like, is there a reason that your logo is just like, because you tried to edit it to like get it onto social media. She's like, is there a reason that like, and she posted that in the chat. I'm just like crying because it's like, she thinks I'm like a psychopath because it's like, why would you just make your own group 10% oh. bigger than, and like the fact that like that little nugget finally got discovered and everyone and she thinks like, oh, I caught him in something, but I did that so she would catch me. Say. <laughs> that's, then, that's, yes, that's my favorite comedy. The ones where people make false like judgments about me and my family that I know aren't true, but they um, all think it's true. But then like my wife, it just drives her crazy. She's like, no, you're misrepresenting us. And I'm like, no, they're the assholes judging us. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's the trap. You set the trap because they are now doing the thing you wanted <laughs> oh. them to do. Which, oh, like, it's you, the best. It's like you're crying. And then everyone's just like, now people just think you're a psycho. And I'm like, yeah, isn't that so funny? Like, isn't that the best? <laughs> like, it's so. OK, like, Chad, I feel bad. Do you have to go? Uh, yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, I do. Yep. All right. This is fun. Right. Well, thank you. That guys. was fun. Thanks to Alan for showing up, man. That was great. And uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, uh, everybody. And yeah, it's just time for dinner, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, guys, <laughs> I, I got out of my C.S. Lewis group uh, reading miracles, and it turns out God's real. We all agreed on it at the end of the group. So are you still going to go for the money thing, though, and deny him? Uh, that's where it gets tricky. Now, this is where you have to trick God, where you're sort of like, I'm on your team, God. You lift me up so I can. I believe you in you, but yeah. all this cash is fine yeah. too, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, this is where you sort of get mega pastry, where you're like, God, if you just make me famous, I will make you famous, you know? And then, because it's sort of like, you know, God, you need me to get the word out. I believe in you. It's all these other jokers. He said he would you. repay tenfold. So Yeah. Alan, what you should do is you should write like a, like a comedian's tra translation of C.S. Lewis's Miracles. You think you can pull that off? Oh, yeah. Lube, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come yeah, on, Dad. Yeah. Who are you? Yeah. I just never yeah. read you know, which is probably, uh, yeah, yeah, bad. well, pretty obvious. Aslan's, uh, you know, an analogy for, you know, Donald Trump, who's the lion who will come back after he was cast out by Joe Biden. And in all this stuff, when I read this stuff, it just the patterns they just make themselves obvious. The patterns are going to be so huge, they're going to be extremely large patterns. I said the patterns are great, Jonathan Pejo. Step aside, I said. Uh, <laughs> I can also analyze a symbol like the barley wheat grow flowing is like my hair. But yeah, so, you know, it, uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, guys, everyone can go to bed, enjoy, you know, sleep tight. We just figured out God's real. So, you know, we're just kind of, we can wrap up this whole corner thing. We're sort of, sort of done, you know? Maybe. <laughs> okay. All right. I just... In the comments, I just got Parlato's phone number. I'm going to dox him. I'm going to tell everyone. Do it. Do All it. right. See ya. Okay. Whoa. Wow. 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 Oh, my gosh. <laughs> See you, Chad. See you, man. Bye, everybody.
Optimal grip. Optimal grip. Optimal grip. Optimal grip. The hand control. Literally the optimal grip on them to throw them. This optimal grip is what is what what I said a lobster monkey arm wrestle. Five, 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 five. Action in which we are trying to write find five, 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 five. That's the optimal gripping. Five, 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 five. But what about the dream catcher of optimal grip? He called that dream catcher of optimal grip. Oh. Oh, wait, I'm optimally grippling better than I was before. Strumming on the old banjo. And with free sushi. It's sort of the... I don't grab the bottom pincer. Well, I grab the bottom pincer. Y'all stay over there.